So thank you everyone for um, joining us today. So as I did mention, this session will be recorded. Uh, my name, for those who don't know me, is Anita Beckham and I'm the head of events at Tankstream Labs. Um, Tankstream Labs is a co-working space for tech startups with a global focus. So we have three offices across Australia, two in Sydney, um, and one in Perth, which um, Barclay is currently situa situated at today. So our original um, office began in Bridge Street and the second office in Sydney so is part of the Sydney Startup Hub. And then we have one in office um, in the EY building there. So we were founded in 2012 by Tim Fung, who is also the founder of Airtasker. Um, he basically wanted a space, a co-working space for him and his entrepreneurial friends to work out of and collaborate with. And so we were born in 2012. So today's session is Founder Stories, and what Founder Stories is about is sharing of what our founders are doing, um, what they have planned, what, what's worked for them, what they're still trying to work out. It really is a place um, for them to share their story, so not necessarily have all the answers, but it's um, about sharing their story and sharing their journey, especially during these times. So today, um, sorry, before I, before I go on and introduce our guest today, um, the format of the discussion will be a 30 minute conversation between myself and Barclay, and then we'll have the opportunity to open to the floor for questions for the last 15 minutes or so. There is a chat box um, as part of Google Hangouts here, so please put your questions in there and we'll get through them either during the call or towards the end uh, during the Q&A um, session. So we do this every Tuesday and every Friday at 4 p.m. So make sure you join us the next one as well. And to now, I would love to introduce um, our founder for today. So the lovely man that you see on your screen is um, Barclay Day. He is a co-founder and general manager of Acora and BD Water. So thanks so much for joining us today, Barclay. It's really great to have a Perth member um, join us in this oh. series. Pleasure to be here, Nina. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> cool. Well, let's get started. Do you want to just um, tell me about you, your background, and about your businesses? Because I know you have a few uh, for those who aren't familiar with you. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm from an agricultural background. So my, both my parents are farmers, uh, and I was raised sort of north of Muche over here in WA, which is about an hour and a half, two hours north of Perth. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I got through school and got into uni, and then. Uh, did a mechanical engineering degree where I started my first business, which was in the, the water and contracting space, similar to what I'm in now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then before I got into the mining industry, uh, so mining obviously pretty big in Australia, very big in WA, mm -hmm. uh, so where I was uh, mechanical engineering, uh, doing mechanical engineering work there, uh, and 23 years old, fresh out of uni, and straight into $160 million worth of projects, uh, oh. which was <laughs> which is a huge task. Uh, so that was working for Forty Ski Metals, so Andrew Forrest, big business. Yeah. Um, and FMG was very, and still is, but starting to get a bit corporate now. But was very startup esque. So mm -hmm. just over ten years old when I joined, uh, and it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. It's the only place I, I think you probably could have in Australia walked out so young, into mm -hmm. so much responsibility. So that was. That was learning things quick. Um, mm -hmm. Stayed there for four or so years before, um, before sort of getting that bug and realizing that I was probably destined to to do bigger things than even the, what the mining industry had for me in WA. Mm -hmm. uh, and decided to not start just one business, but but two. Uh, mm -hmm. And the goal around that was one was uh, in a space that I knew well, which is water, and where I was confident I could monetize quite early and and get mm -hmm. get something up and running pretty quick. Uh, mm -hmm. and then quit my job and then get into into the property space, which was a Cora. Uh, so yeah, that's basically me uh, and how we all got started on, on this journey. Awesome, would you want to tell us, uh, give us a bit of like a elevator pitch on both your companies then? Yeah, sure. So uh, BD Water, like I said, is, is some, in the water, obviously in the water space. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a contracting and so engineering construction company. So basically we, we design and build irrigation and water systems. Uh, so it's a team of about uh, you know, six full timers or ten, 10 or so people, including contractors, where we'll literally uh, build uh, irrigation systems more in the agricultural and commercial scene. Uh, mm -hmm. And we run four drill rigs uh, and we have our pumping and irrigation crews. Uh, but on top of that, we also have a technology team. So we're actually, which is about to release our first product in the technology space, which is a water license trading platform for Western Australia. Uh, yep. And 
So that's the water so, side, and that's doing. And is that well. all in WA, or is that national? Totally, just WA. Um, it's a, it's you know, it's it's a physical operation, so not yep. um, not as scalable as more the techn technology oriented stuff. But a uh, couple of years old now, but something I've been doing a while. Uh, and Acora is yep. a, a technology enabled uh, property management uh, company. So we pride ourselves on being mm -hmm. the property management company that you actually love. So the whole thing around Acora <laughs> is pretty straightforward in the sense that we, we will manage your property. So we'll find you tenants. Uh, we have our own property managers that will look after your property for you. So physical operation mm -hmm. again. Uh, uh, but the twist is that we, we have built our own technology that actually drives real efficiency and effectiveness from within our own business uh, that enables our property managers uh, not to be so bogged down with administrative work, uh, but to be able to focus on the people side of it. So for our tenants and for our owners uh, to get the love and the attention they need uh, from their property manager, which is a huge issue within the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, we're a property management agency that uh, is trying to really change the game as far as doing the right thing by tenants and owners. Awesome. And how long has Acora been around for? Uh, about three years now. Uh, okay. It's a team of, of eight, uh, mm -hmm. fully self-funded from from its founders, but it's four founders. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we're uh, doing very well. Actually, I'm really happy with what we've got. We've got our first product out, so we launched this year. Awesome. Uh, Congrats. Got our first customers on. Um, and we just got into uh, an accelerator program in, in WA called Plus A. So awesome. really exciting stuff. Awesome. Sounds like there's a lot going on still. <laughs> <laughs> Very a lot, yeah. <laughs> or, or it is, right? Um, so yeah. I guess, and I know we had a conversation prior to this, but I guess I just want everyone to understand as well, because you, you obviously are involved in two businesses, but just mm -hmm. so they understand your split of time across both businesses and how involved you are in each as well. Yeah, sure. So uh, like I sort of alluded to it at the start there, the water space is something I'm personally pretty confident in and something where I was confident I could build a team around me that could actually run that. Um, so BD Water is, it took, certainly when I first quit my mining job, I uh, spent a lot of time on to get up and running, uh, mm -hmm. but largely it's self-sufficient. It has a management team in place uh, and it's growing uh, even with uh, our recent troubles that we're still doing okay with the pandemic but uh, basically a business that itself is doing very well and it's largely day-to-day -day doesn't actually involve me so I, I'm on higher level sort of direction for the team mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the day-to-day -day is ran by the management team and Maria Andy and and uh, another Andy that mm -hmm. uh, looked after that for me so my time is largely spent now on a Cora. It's mm -hmm. a business that uh, is going up to significant scale within the property market in Australia and potentially beyond. So uh, my my time is much more needed there. So probably like an 80, 20 split and sometimes less uh, yep. in that sense to get that cool. up and going. Great. And I mean, you did say, you know, you still were able, you're still able to grow um, during mm -hmm. this pandemic as well. So do you just want to explain how um, this COVID-19 situation has affected your businesses to date? Yeah, so, I mean, I said we were able to grow that. I suppose, um, I don't wanna, I feel like a lot of people are speaking about the positives in, in a pandemic. <laughs> like very realistically, it's been a very tough few weeks. Uh, yeah. And we took a huge hit in, in the water space, for example, on, mm -hmm. you know, there was a day there that went by where $100,000 in contracts just went, went out the window, you know, and that's, yeah. that's weeks worth of work for our team. So it's been tough. Uh, it's been a, a hard slog. We've had to move very quickly to stay alive um, when your roadmap is just completely burnt. So uh, in the water space, we, I suppose, and I would count somewhat lucky, we're in a space that was able to kind of keep operating even under restrictions because it's a necessary thing to keep mm -hmm. agriculture and, and even some homes uh, connected to water. Mm -hmm. So. You know, we were able to keep moving, but we did have to really rethink about how we're approaching our marketing and, and, and had to dig deep on where we're finding our new leads. Mm -hmm. uh, and Maria, my, uh, my marketing manager there, has done an amazing job of transitioning us. Actually, from one of the, I think, a founder's session with TSL, uh, one of the advice, early advice that came up was maybe you should be looking at Facebook. Well, we looked at Facebook and we went very hard at Facebook <laughs> and 100% of our marketing effort almost into Facebook and we're awesome. really seeing reaping the rewards for that. Uh, so it's been tough, 
it, it has been really tough. It's, the uncertainty has been really hard. That's probably the biggest thing with giving direction to the team where you can't be certain. Uh, and yeah. that's really, and for after offering years of certainty around what we did and, and meeting milestones only to mm. say, I don't know, is, is been hard. Um, mm. Acora was fresh off launching. So pretty shit time to be launching, <laughs> but, uh, and, and we had to, you know, we had ambitions about who and how many people we're going to be bringing on as far as our new clients go. Uh, so we've had to really rethink about how we're approaching that property management a few weeks ago wasn't on people's minds, but we still mm -hmm. had to be, be thinking about how we were getting ourselves out there. So that, that's been tough, but we're starting to get more traction now, which is good. Yeah, especially um, now, you know, you see all over the news about all the changes with real estate and property management. Mm. Um, there's been a lot of changes. So that's an industry where yeah. it's impacted a lot. And so you just launch and straight away you had to adapt. <laughs> Dang, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it just, and how did how was that um, with the team? Like, were they a, what did you do to be able to motivate them? Say, hey, you know what, we're going to go this way. Now we have to just quickly change. And how how was the team's um, morale? You know, during that time. Look, I, you know, I, I the team members we have, um, you know, we're, we're still small teams on each, right? You know, so mm. less than less than twenty odd people. So it's still very strong personal relationships there with, with those mm. people. So as far as morale goes. I, I wanted to be really upfront with people and I, I personally being a strong direction for us and, and what our roadmap's going to look like. And basically it meant having some uh, pretty tough conversations around what the reality could be uh, yeah. for the coming months if certain situations come, you know, arise. But yeah. we we're pretty quick to do that. So, you know, within the first weeks of things getting tough, um, we were pretty upfront and sort yep. of saying, hey, this is what could happen and we need to be really thinking about how that's going to affect us and what we're going to do. Yep. So I, I wasn't trying to put a positive spin on things. I was really trying to be honest with our team mm. and get everyone on the same page and yeah. make sure that they knew that we, that I personally and the, the rest of our management team had their backs about what was, what was going on. And no matter what happened, we were going to do everything we could um, yep. to make it happen for them. So. Yep. How was the morale? Uh, I, I would say, like everyone, I personally had had my moment, and I know quite a few of my teams had their moments. That over a day or two, generally, where we're all sort of wondering if the world's going to end, um, <laughs> yeah. and then, but really, we kind of knuckled down. We had a lot to do, and and we knew that I got people on board with a path that could take us out of it. And, yeah, um, so you just and that, got on with it. We did get on with it largely yeah. after having our moments. We got on with it. <laughs> Cool. Um, for those who are just joining us, remember, if you do want to ask Mark any questions, please pop them through into the chat box and I'll get through um, to them during the session as well. So now we spoke about your the different businesses, um, the mm. staff morale. So how did, how were your operations, how were the operations of your business um, prior to COVID-19? And then, so now what is actually operationally different? Yeah, so look, we were already pretty tech enabled on both businesses. You know, we had we, we had the flexibility in both to work from wherever you wanted really anyway. So operationally different for the most part, particularly for our administration staff, um, was just working from home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that wasn't that hard to, to sort of happen. In fact, we did it within a couple of days and there was a couple of screens that got pilfered from the office to make happen, <laughs> but you know, that, that was easy enough. Um, operationally, I mean, uh, for BD Water, we, we had regional restrictions in WA. A lot of our work was remote, so we had to, you know, we got held up by the police a couple of times and I had to write some fancy letters to make sure that we got through the uh, the blockades, essentially, which was interesting. Wow. Oh, because you, yeah. you had to be there physically, didn't you? No, no, you had to have a letter from your employer to say that, you know, what your intent was to go remote, essentially. So, uh, oh, you know. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it was. We literally got stopped by police multiple times <laughs> to sort of and had to explain ourselves, which was interesting. Um, but we fixed that. We had formal letters and things like that in place after Great. that. And no fines? Uh, no fines. It was yeah. literally, it was funny though, because it got announced on a Tuesday, I think, mm -hmm. one Monday or a Tuesday. And that very next morning, so I think it might have been announced Monday night, Tuesday morning, police blockade. Not very, <laughs> you got stopped. So we had to, my four, one of my four apprentices had to turn around. Um, the, uh, in a core, though, operationally, we couldn't do home, ins we can't do physical inspections, right? Mm -hmm. So we had to make the call and explain to our owners that, you know, the the inspections we had scheduled for 
for April are, oh, we can't do that. We're not going to go there. We're okay. not going to risk uh, the, our tenant's health and certainly not our property manager's health. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we had to make that change. Mm -hmm. um, but that was okay. Our owners were understanding and, uh, you know, we're heading into May now. It's looking, we're actually starting to schedule and again, the, those restrictions got lifted. So right. it's been sort of a, a short-lived pain, I think. One month is okay. Uh, did you do any virtual inspections during that one month or what did you do? You just went, we're not doing that anymore. We were considering it. Certainly if May looks like we couldn't, we weren't going, we were going to have to. Mm -hmm. um, we did decide that a virtual inspection when, uh, you know, within the first few weeks, probably wasn't going to do the inspection that justice. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to do physical ones if we could in May. So we decided to wait and now we're just going to be scheduling them like normal. Yep, yep. great. Because now that um, the restrictions are lifted, so you're allowed, is it 10 in, in WA, is it 10 people? So you are able to do inspections now? Yeah, and it got physically identified, like it got uh, singled out as, you know, home opens and things like that are now appropriate. So, yeah, but still it, it largely, you know, we're still keeping a, you know, the social distancing side of things and hmm. uh, making sure we're being uh, appropriate with how we you know, enter someone else's home essentially and yeah. all those sorts of things. Yeah, no, fair enough. Okay, wow, that's uh, still, still, everything's going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so we spoke about that. Now I just want to just talk about um, how your staff have been impacted. So it's easy to say, you know, from a business perspective, it's just you, you can work from home and we have the resources here go. But then um, when you're used to coming to the office every day, when you're used to seeing people every day and your colleagues, yeah. it can a bit it can be a bit of a transition to be able to work from home um, and you know not being able to see people. Mm -hmm. So. I just want to get your take or what, what's been happening within your teams. Are people struggling? Are people loving it? And how you are managing the teams um, during this period as well? Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been interesting. Like I'm, I'm heavily extroverted, so I nearly died within the first uh, yep. four or five days. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and as soon as the, 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 even the slightest talk of going back to the office, then I'm trying to get everyone in. Um, but, you know, it really, I think it did depend on the individual. So some people, sort of seem to sing it in there and um it wasn't wasn't an issue for them at all mm -hmm. uh others uh were like rats in a cage you know and i, and I was getting really worried about <laughs> what we were going to do with them as equally worried for myself as what i was going to do right. my poor fiance Zanthi, uh, she she moved out within a few days of the office we had a shared office at home and that didn't last <laughs> <laughs> um but it, look how did everyone handled it well we had some interesting cases like two of my uh, two of my senior members of the water space, they actually lived together, um, li lived, they don't anymore, which was not because of this, but, uh, you know, they were, they were living together and then they were working together and then now they're working from home together. And that was a really interesting dynamic that we were like, wow, uh, yeah. we can't keep this up for much longer. We need to do something about that. Yeah. Um, so there, there has been some edge case, like some interesting individual cases, but largely mm -hmm. we changed we got home okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what what I did start doing though is, you know, if I hadn't heard or spoken to someone via a meeting or I felt like we hadn't connected and, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of our team members are outside of Western Australia, um, you know, just, just picking up the phone and, and having a, you know, no, non-work or work if they want to speak about work conversation just to mm -hmm. see how they're doing. I know that sounds pretty standard. I'm sure a lot of people are doing that. It's not revelationary, but uh, keeping that human connection is best as best we can, because that's what's really lacking right now, mm -hmm. um, as far as getting that connection with not only the teammates, but also, you know, socially everyone's been impacted, right? So making sure that that's yep. remaining as healthy as you can. Yeah, and have you been doing things with your team to try and keep that, um, you know, so you've got your work, but then the social yeah. aspect or just the human connection part. So for example, are you doing, um, you know, daily stand-ups or are you doing Friday drinks virtually or anything sure. like that? Yeah, well, look. Um, again, it depends on the business. So on the on Beatty Water, we, we we sort of have regular catch ups anyway, and uh, so that was something that was already there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd say we made a couple of physical visits in the last couple of weeks because we had to, and we have to be out in the field anyway. So mm -hmm. that didn't suffer too much. Drinks were always a part of that, so we got <laughs> through. Um, with the Cora, we we have scheduled a couple of things at least. Try to at least once a week sort of do something remote we've been we're playing a, a board game uh with, with a core that one of our developers developed 
actually himself. He brought really? a, a classic movie online. It's called Secret <laughs> Secret Hitler. If anyone knows that, it's going to be it's going to be Secret good fun. Hitler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he yeah, developed yeah. it during these time. I, I think he did. I, I think it was in the works. Uh, I don't know. Alex, maybe Alex can let us know. But uh, it was. It was a. It's a. Fun, it's a classic board game. But he he brought it online essentially. So we're playing that tomorrow. Uh, oh, but yeah, yeah, just things like that where we we do for at least half an hour, forty minutes a week. We do catch up and just have a bit of fun. Um, yeah. And yeah, we've done that a couple of times. But we've got a couple of people in the office now, so it looks like it's starting to ease up a little bit, which is good. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Are your own team like starting to come back? Into yeah. Yeah. Right now? Yep. Cool. Well, this is the uh, the Perth PSL office behind me. I'm I'm in a meeting. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Um. But yeah. So like you know, like you said, with all the, the fun stuff. So that that's awesome that you guys are having a games night, an online games night um, yeah. tomorrow. That's cool. And Mira is actually organising a community trivia for TSL. Yeah. Mira. Which is on, I believe, Thursday. Um, yeah, so, so that should be fun as well. So, yeah, you know, bringing a little bit of, um, like I said, human connection or just a little bit of fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people are starting to, um, well, I'm definitely starting to get sick of staying home. <laughs> and, um, yeah. you know, there's only so many digital games and things you can play online as well. But it's good to know we have that. I mean, I've been playing, have you heard of Jackbox TV? Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we played a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. At least we have that um, handy, and that you know that we can have the human connection that way as well. Um, so I do the like just it, it's been good that we can do that. But you know, recognizing last week when I sort of got to see a couple of my team members for the first time in four weeks in person, mm-hmm. really made me recognize like shit. We better get moving back together sooner rather than later. Like if this really was a drawn out thing um in a huge way where we had to be isolated for a long time mm-hmm. these sorts of things are only i, I do they're not permanent solutions um yeah. and, and it's really I, I think people did these are good things you got to do these things but nothing takes away from that human connection by being physically present in my opinion so it was i, I think there was a relief on a few of my introverted uh software developers faces when they saw human connection outside of the house for the first time in three or four weeks uh, you know, that kind of said to me, like, yeah, okay, this is okay, but yeah. it needs to come to an end at some point. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely takes a toll, um, especially mm. mentally as well. I think people were starting to see people really hit that that block now, which is, yeah. I think, is a good time now that, you know, things are starting to get a little bit lax, but we still can't become complacent. Yeah. But um, but at least, you know, we we, we see that little that light at the end of the tunnel now, which is great. Yeah. which is great. <laughs> it is. <laughs> See, I guess... Lucky. When, you're, when your team's been working from home and what, and I guess like when we are transitioning from physical from a physical office to a remote office, how have you managed your team's um, productivity and their, and how do you make sure they're still working effectively and efficiently? So if there's any resources or any tools or anything that you've used, if you just want to discuss that, that'd be great. So look, for us, uh, you know, I, we got about 20 people that, that I'm, I, I engage with in some capacity and um, some more than others. But look, the, the thing is I work with brilliant people. I know a lot of people say that, but I've never been a micromanager. The only time that I've had to step in at a micro level for any extended period of time is because we've ha- been having serious issues there. So I, I hire independent people, those that are capable of delivering and I don't have, no, they don't need you know, immediate attention from a manager at every direction. Uh-huh. Um, so productivity for me was less about like, are you being productive today? Because I already know they, they're they doing their very best to do that. It's just the yeah. faith I have the team. Uh, and I know that all my, my managers do. So as far as, it's not a matter of like, I guess, making sure that happens. It's just about, and I suppose, enabling the best that we can while they're at home. And what that involves was, just making sure they had the support they needed, uh, paying close attention to the things that we knew that they were lacking by being at home rather than being like, have you done this today? And why haven't you done this? Mm-hmm. We already had daily stand-ups in place and we already had our scheduled meeting for making sure things are moving the way they should. So, uh, you know, I to expect someone to be as productive when they're being shifted way outside of their comfort of the environment that they had before that they were, they probably liked, uh, I think wouldn't have been fair to them. So I let people settle in, I suppose. And then mm-hmm. we gave 
all the tools that they needed or anything they needed, like screens to get their home home desk set up or, mm -hmm. um, you know, more regular meetings on certain subjects if they needed mm -hmm. the support because we weren't seeing each other and having that casual conversation. But uh, as far as tools for that go, again, back to supporting them with where they needed it. Uh, we already had Slack and we already had Office 365 for Teams and all the other, uh, you know, SharePoint, everything that we had to work remotely. Mm -hmm. So tools for me was just picking up the phone and making sure that we we're doing okay. That That's what we, we had to do. And yep. then just making sure that, and asking tough questions like, how are you doing? And then like, oh yeah, you get the standard sort of, yeah, I'm doing all right. It's like, why are you doing it? How can you be doing it right? Are you actually really enjoying me at home? Cause like, I got a feeling you're not. So yeah. how are you actually feeling? Talk to me really. Like, mm -hmm. tell me, tell me what you're feeling. Uh, and just having that sort of back and forth, uh, is what sort of, if you're talking about productivity, it, it was more about enabling what they didn't have because mm -hmm. they're at home. Mm. So really it's just keeping an open line of communication and letting them know that, you know, if, even if they're not, um, telling you what's going on, but you're actually asking the questions yeah. to make sure, hey, are you okay? Because if you're not, then let's talk about it sort of thing. I think you, as an, as a leader, you have an obligation to be, to read deeper than that. You can't just ask a question and check a box, right? You got to look at that, like listen to the tone of their voice, look at their reaction. Like it really, what do you expect from someone like that? Uh, and then ask the questions, man. Go go deeper if you have to. And and then, I mean, we've built in a trans like on both businesses full transparency. So there was a lot of tough questions getting asked, like where's mm -hmm. our money coming in for next month, or mm -hmm. what happens if uh, they, you know, you should simply count the inspections for the next five five months. Like how how is that business going to operate? Uh, tough questions, and and you've got to be there ready to to answer those tough questions as leaders. So that line of communication wasn't just me quizzing them. It was uh, you know, who's coming back to me with questions they might have on their mind, which was really good. Yeah, and I think that's a, a tough thing for leaders to go through now as well is that they need to be um, quite, I guess, intuitive or more intuitive um, sure. and dig a lot deeper, which in normal circumstances, I mean, you do it, but this it's just a little bit more, now you need to focus at focus on that a lot more um, during these times as well. And then that goes comes back to, um, you know, motivating a team. So making sure that they're still, you know, getting up every day, um, doing this showering, doing the same routine, yeah, yeah. you know, going to work and things. And it's hard when, when you need to set an example and you're the leader and you need to keep motivated, but then you're going to yeah. have your days when you're shit, like, I don't know what to do today. So then, <laughs> you know, and then, then how do you then lead a team and still try to motivate the team when you're in that sort of headspace? Yeah. Like what do you do when, it, when you experience that? And I think like it's a it's a tough balance, right? Because I you know I want to be that that strong leader for the team, but you've got to making sure you're showing a reasonable amount of vulnerability there. Um, I am working at home for a lot of the days for this, and that was really hard for me. Uh, I didn't personally like doing that, and, and it made it tough to be to feel confident in myself to, and then portray and confidence. Your fiance moved out of the room. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, well, <laughs> um, you know, and. It, it it's been hard like it hasn't it it's been tougher to be a good leader i feel and it, you can't help but feel like you're letting the team down by not being able to offer some consistency and and predictability and what's going on but this is tough times and this is a damn well pandemic one in a hundred years i reckon so mm. uh they they expect that you're not going to be um maybe where you were a month ago but as long as Oh, you got to work hard to be there though. Like, so I, I had to force a schedule. I had to still get up on time and I had to make sure that, um, you know, my team was seeing that I, I was doing everything I could personally to get us all through this. Uh, and that, so was everyone else. Um, so you were leading by example, basically you're just, you're getting up, you're showing up and you're just getting, getting shit done. <laughs> that and like leading by example and then and then also failing and saying shit up I, I stuffed up today my bad <laughs> you know like <laughs> like owning it right like completely yeah, yeah. owning it yeah yeah cool um okay guys so i'm going to open to the floor so i've got a couple more questions um for barclay today but i will open up to the floor i can see there is already one question there and i'm pretty sure you've stolen my question paul but that's okay <laughs> um so paul has asked how is uh 2021 looking for Acora? Yeah, so thanks, Paul. Uh, I think he's not too far in the office over no, there. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> he didn't give me a heads up that he was going to ask me a question, so thanks for the picture. 
Um, so look, Acora for the rest of the, you yeah, asked about 2021, but it's redefined 2021. Um, 2020 for us is very much about getting through into the final stage of, of plus eight, uh, which includes a, a pre-seed round of funding. Uh, and then we're looking to really scale up operations over the next couple of months in a significant way in, in Western Australia. So by the, by the tail end of this year, uh, calendar year, we're looking to have raised our Series A um, off the back of the pre-seed round, hopefully in the next couple of months. Yeah. Uh, so 2021 is going to be a very large year for us. Uh, we're we're very uh, very keen to be sort of scaling into multi-state uh, and scaling up our our technology as well to be something very industry defining. Mm-hmm. So hundreds and hundreds of properties essentially trying to get onboarded on the platform and then into the thousands uh, is something that we're looking for in 2021. But interesting landscape, but with, with everything going on, but uh, pandemic aside, uh, regardless, we're, we're going to be making making for a very scale up 2021. Wow, awesome. Sounds exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. And then guys, and if, if you just joined us, we're doing a Q&A um, Q&A session at the moment. So just pop your questions into the chat box there. We've got another about 10 or so minutes um, left with Barkley. So Barkley, you spoke about that plus eight accelerator um, with Aquora. Do you just want to explain what it is, how you get, like what you're doing and what the different stages are to help you get to where you want to get in 2021? Yeah, so uh, it's an amazing accelerator actually. And I I don't say that just because I'm in it and I'm trying to get to the final stage. Um, (laughs) So uh, maybe Derek, uh, those are working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but no uh, honestly it's a really uh world-class accelerator uh in the sense that the the deal terms are great and the exposure is amazing um as far as not exposure as a business but is exposure to industry representatives and um and, and mentors so to give a, a quick overview of what it looks like uh, it's a six month long accelerator which is quite long six um months. yeah 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 so yeah, so the first sort of couple of weeks are getting through to is is stage one, and and that's um, you know like a boot camp. You get sort of a, a general application, uh, and then top fifteen got selected, uh, sort of top twenty four get selected, go to a boot camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get a single day, a very intensive, one of the biggest days I've had, uh, boot camp, and out of that twenty four, it went down to uh, fifteen. So that's stage two. So we're in stage two now, uh, which is another two months of uh, master classes, interviews, um, so, you know, one-on-one sessions with, uh, you know, the entrepreneur in residence and Derek mm-hmm. Gerard, which um, is, is sort of the big name in investment over here in, in WA. So it's a very, uh, it's, it's been an honor sort of to be spending an hour or 45 minutes with him one-on-one as a business okay. uh, every four months. So that alone is almost worth the program. Um, and then, so after that couple of months, we pitch, right? So our 15 pitch and we, the whole time for that two months is about getting you pitch ready, investor ready, uh, mm-hmm. to get in front of investors to pitch, to get to the final stage, uh, which is amazing. Cause we just needed that. We, we needed our business to mm-hmm. get there and sort of get that critical assessment. And then the final stage is another two to three months, uh, where you're actually funded at that point. So post that pitch, if you get through to top eight. So that's 15, so 24, 15 to eight, uh, and eight goes through the final stage where you've got pre-seed funding um, between 20 and $100,000, mm-hmm. uh, which is great month, that's great. And then it's intensive, so intensive workshopping and uh, every week and one-on-one sessions getting, frequency gets increased with Derek to once a week, which is amazing. And then really by the end of that, the goal is to have you investor ready to hit the, hit the ground and actually get out there and, and scale your business and mm-hmm. hopefully raise uh, an external fund uh, yep. round to be pursuing pursuing your dreams. Cool. So you are in stage two, you said now. So what that that's yeah. month two, is that right? Yeah. So about twenty for June. Um, so that's uh, just over a month and a half away. It'll we'll be pitching for getting to stage three. Wow. So uh, if there's any WA businesses, <laughs> I, I would highly recommend looking at the program. Uh, I, a lot of people. I think even I brushed off initially because it's Perth and uh, it must be too small and it wasn't. It's like one of the best programs in Australia and, and it's world-class and I mean that. 
Awesome. Well, uh, congratulations and good luck for for the next stage and for for your pitch as well. So that's we a need it. Uh, the business <laughs> are really good. Um, <laughs> Tori, the competition might be might you know similar. It might not be too bad, but then we get there and like, oh my god, what happened to her? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just need to up your game now, Barkley. We do, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> so that's a so that's a bit of the future about Acora. How about for BD Water? What do you have planned um, for the future of BD Water? Yeah, so Beauty Water's ambitions um, are different to Acora's. Acora is very much about uh, scaling very, you know, into Australia nationally and looking to acquire a massive market share in a multi-billion dollar uh, industry. Mm -hmm. uh, Beauty Water uh, has its own niches in, you know, very well engineered, very precise and uh, very high specification water infrastructure. So that market alone, I mean, it's in the it's in the tens and hundreds of millions, which is amazing. Uh, but that's about creating um, a business that's that's really sustainable and very profitable, so super high margins, uh, as well as you know for for its owners and as well as for its employees, an amazing place to work in a space that we love. And water is amazing. So I love water, and and, I, and it, my whole team loves water, and there's so many great things about it. So we're about building uh, a sustainable and high value business, but not necessarily about dominating a market or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. That'll do it. That'll do itself. Do it itself organically, I suppose, just with the standard we set. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, as far as where we're going, you know, we we grew 100. We were on track for growing 100% this financial year from the previous year, and the year before that, we right. put through more money that year than we did in my previous nine years of running a similar business. So it's wow. a business that has growth, very large growth potential in a market we're doing very well in. Yep. Uh, so pandemic aside, we've found we're still working full time. Haven't put any anyone aside, uh, having uh, no hours reduced. We're going very, very strong still. Uh, mm -hmm. And as soon as people start loosening up the wallets maybe a little bit more, we'll be back mm -hmm. on track for, for really getting setting those growth standards. Yeah, awesome. That's well, great to hear. Um, so I've only got one more question um, for you, Barkley. And so guys, if you have any last minute questions, which tend to always happen, uh, please make sure that you put it into the chat box so we do get it um, to Barkley before we finish up the session. Um, so before I ask you the last question, um, mm -hmm. Barkley, so with these founder stories where it started, it actually started from the first conversation with you. Funnily enough, sure. when you actually said, you know, this during this time, you want to hear more about um, what other founders are doing. And that's sure. how I actually started. And this is, I don't know how many sessions we've done now. But, uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but we've done a lot. The, the inspiration actually came from you. So thanks for getting Founder Story started. <laughs> My pleasure, right? Okay, thanks. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, you do. So I guess the last thing I just want to ask you is, you know, we've had this discussion about everything business, about everything people. What is your like your last words or your piece of advice that you want to give to people who are listening now and people will be watching the recording after? Ah, uh, good. I've been wanting to say this for <laughs> it. It's a small forum of people I do have. So, um, look for for this. Like we, everyone, we live in Australia. So I imagine anyone that's here is listening to this is probably in Australia, and I don't think. A lot of people realize how damn blessed we are to be living in this country because the government went to uh like went, went to bat for us and got a bunch of money to make sure that we all keep roofs over our head uh they you know got the banks in line about making sure that credit was opened up and that they could push out home loans all these things so you're not gonna you're likely not gonna die and even if uh things go really really bad from a business sense you're still going to be around okay so the world has not ended very likely not to end and that you're so incredibly lucky to be in a country that's remote is economically stable uh we're self-sufficient we have uh resources and we have massive agriculture we produce more than what we can possibly use with our small population of 23 24 million so we are so lucky we don't actually have to really worry about not having a roof over our head or eating at night um, so it's a great place to be. So that might mean that may, maybe your business takes a hit or maybe you find a new opportunity. I, I, I don't know. Or maybe unfortunately this is the end for what, one of your, you know, your business journey for now. I, I don't know. But at the end of the day, um, it's okay. And you're going to get another shot. So 
try not to look, try to keep some perspective. Um, it's a good, it's a good place to be and, and we will get through this. Try not to hold on to what things have been in the past. Uh, there's the bright future ahead still. So yeah, uh, I don't think people should be so negative about where things are at right now. Like look forward and, and be grateful for what we have. Like there's not enough gratitude for living in Australia. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I mean, our healthcare system, number one. Uh, I mean, yeah. like we've got access to universal healthcare. I mean, that's definitely got to be a perk. And you're right. I don't, I think sometimes during this time we're just thinking about oh what could happen and we're so scared about what's going to happen next and we don't actually realize we're actually pretty damn blessed to be in this country and be looked after the way we have been we yeah, have and we're, we're physically isolated just naturally in our space and not only that australia was like a couple of months or a month or so behind everyone else so mm -hmm. we got to sort of have foresight we're lucky yeah. we're lucky and we're lucky we didn't get hit as hard as we could have yeah, definitely. And like I said, there's one last question. <laughs> um, but Paul did say thank you, Barkley. Top words of wisdom. I agree, Paul. Um, and Nick has asked a question. So final question for today is, what are your priorities for the next six months other than plus eight, but maybe focus more on the immediate future? I'm assuming yeah. you're referring to Okora. Yeah, so uh, for, for a, uh, focus really is scaling Okora. So, uh, you know, outside of plus eight, you know, it's about finding market traction for that business. Yeah. So um, in the next like four weeks that this is what you're planning on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the next four weeks is very much about finding our product market fit and finding traction and finding our path to market. Uh, that that's hundred percent of what we're trying to, uh, trying to achieve over the immediate future for us. And then even beyond that, it's just like, as soon as we find out, it's about how we scale that. So, uh, that is, that is the priority. Uh, moving moving forward for us um, and because there's so much of the plan that I spoke about 2021 that uh, you know that hinges on that so yeah very very much what we're looking to execute on awesome cool well again thanks so much for your time Barkley and because of you we started this founder series uh, founder story series <laughs> um, so we do do this every Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m with the TSL founder um, and some sessions are open to the public whereas some are exclusive to TSL members only so if you do want access to our digital community initiatives um, you're welcome to join our digital membership so visit our website tankstreamlabs.com for more info but for now Thanks so much for your time again, Barkley, and I'm sure you know we'll see the end of this, and uh, we might even see you over in Sydney when you when you um, you know, scale up a core all the way to to the east side of Australia. <laughs> oh, thanks, Anita. I do have to say uh, a big thank you for to each of my teams, uh, and you know uh, Nick, Fry, and Rachel, and uh, Maria, and Andy, and Andy, and a big thanks to to my fiance Xanthi, who has been on the the uh, startup journey with me for over a decade uh so she she puts up with a lot to, to make that happen so big thank you to my teams uh they these businesses are just uh our joint sort of forces coming together and it's not just about me it's about them so thanks yeah. Anita. thank you and good luck with um your upcoming adventures all right see you, man. Thanks, see you later right. see you around bye